1996, our protagonist, Moss, was seven years old. They lived in a semi-urban area, which was rather awkward. Firstly, the majority of residents were out-of-town laborers with modest incomes. Secondly, there were no supermarkets around. In the summer, when you wanted to eat some fruit, there was nowhere to buy it. Sometimes, there were a couple of apples by the roadside, and the local kids would fight over them. Just to get a bite was such a delightful thing. Moss said, at that time, eating fruit was almost a luxury, not to mention imported fruit. However, despite these circumstances, Moss had the chance to eat imported chili cherries. And it could be confirmed that if there was a ranking for who ate imported chili cherries in China in 1996, he would be near the top. At that time, they had neighbors living to their left. They were business owners, as well as their landlords. Moss respectfully called the man Uncle Shang. Uncle Shang's wife, he called Auntie Shang but he was unsure whether her surname was really Shang. He just remembered was that Auntie Shang was extraordinarily beautiful and loved to dress up. This couple was always dealing in the fruit business within the county. Moss, with his sweet talking skills and roly-poly appearance, was particularly endearing to them. As such, they would often give him some fruit-like slightly overripe bananas and bruised apples. For a while, Uncle Zhang would mysteriously bring out pink tissue paper, wrapping a few incredibly large cherries. He told Moss, these are imported chili cherries. Upon eating them just once, Moss was instantly hooked. They were too delicious. From then on, Whenever they saw Uncle Shang, they would basically rush into his arms, delighted. However, for a while, they didn't see Uncle Shang. They heard that he and his wife had made some money. They had met a big boss who was importing cherries. In the harvest season of his orchard, to prevent the fruits from falling and getting damaged, which would affect their appearance for sale. They filled the orchard with mattresses. The couple was responsible for arranging these mattresses. This story was considered a good business anecdote at the time, so it received quite a bit of publicity. However, good times didn't last long. Uncle Zhang moved back not long after. He said that while the imported cherries were delicious, they were too ahead of their time and too expensive for everyone. Auntie Zhang ran away with the big boss, leaving Uncle Zhang. But from an outsider's perspective, Uncle Zhang didn't seem too upset. He drove a small car and renovated his house, and he treated Moss even better, showering him with endless snacks and toys. There was a steady stream of matchmakers who heard about his situation, but he remained unmoved. Only Moss knew that Uncle Zhang often cried alone late at night, or made phone calls to someone in the middle of the night, shouting loudly, I'll spend any amount of money. Until that winter, when the new year was approaching, Moss's parents took him to Uncle Zhang's house to pay the rent. In fact, Uncle Zhang had not urged them to pay, but they wanted to take the opportunity to care about him and invite him to celebrate the new year with them. After all, he was alone. But that day, as soon as they walked in, they saw Uncle Zhang dressed in red, looking like a groom. However, when Moss threw himself into Uncle Zhang's arms, Uncle Zhang burped and Moss smelled a strange odor. In the meantime, he saw a bride sitting next to the bed in Uncle Zhang's room, her head covered with a red veil. For some reason, 
Moss suddenly felt uneasy and started crying. He didn't dare tell his parents about the bride in the room. He just cried. When Uncle Zhang poured him a fruit juice, he felt that the glass also had that strange smell from Uncle Zhang's mouth. He didn't want to drink it and knocked it over onto the floor. His father, helpless and embarrassed, took him home. When they got home, they heard a noise from Uncle Zhang's house, as if all the pots and pans had fallen to the floor. When Moss's father rushed over to check, he found that Uncle Zhang had died, lying on his back. Apparently, he had drunk an entire bottle of pesticide. When Moss and his family had arrived earlier, Uncle Zhang must have just taken a sip, but their sudden visit had interrupted him. The smell that Moss had detected was likely that of the pesticide. At the time, the adults also found a drawing on the wall of Uncle Zhang's room. The man in the drawing was him, the woman and the child in the middle had no faces drawn. Only Moss wondered, where did the lady sitting in the room go? Not long after Uncle Zhang's death, Auntie Zhang came back in a worn-out cotton coat, during the sound of firecrackers, her hair disheveled, eyes unfocused, her former beauty gone. That day, Moss was playing with the snow at the door. He saw Auntie Zhang from a distance, but he didn't recognize her until she was close. Suddenly, Auntie Zhang collapsed in front of Uncle Zhang's house, and they heard the sound of the big iron door being struck. When his mother rushed out to see, Auntie Zhang had already died. No one knew what had happened to her or why she had come back like this. Only later, when Moss secretly went to Uncle Zhang's yard to play and peeped into the room from the back window, he strangely found that the woman in the drawing on the wall had a face now, and it was Auntie Zhang. Once, Moss was playing in Uncle Zhang's yard and his mother told him to play for a while and not to always be at other people's places. However, as he was playing, he felt jittery. Any small sound around him could startle him. He was in a daze, his head full of cold sweat. Then he heard a clapping sound from Uncle Zhang's house, and a strange laughter, as if someone was yelling with a strangled voice, Play hammer, play hammer. He curiously looked over. Inside the room, a child was hanging, clapping hands, and shouting, play hangman, play hangman. As the child turned around, Moss realized with horror, it was himself. Then everything went black. When he woke up, his parents and neighbors were sitting in a group and a few strong uncles with iron shovels were cursing and pacing around, turning Uncle Zhang's house upside down. His father looked worried. On the table was the drawing from Uncle Zhang's house. The face of the child between Uncle Zhang and Auntie Zhang had been drawn. It was Moss. Afterwards, his family sought many masters, because Moss had near accidents all year round, either nearly drowning or falling unconscious. In winter, he even fell into an ice hole. A push from a classmate could dislocate his arm. They even moved houses, but nothing helped. Finally, according to the words of an old master, if the child could survive till twelve years old, he would be fine. Sure enough, after turning twelve, Moss slowly stopped being so unlucky.